Hi everyone and welcome to this evening's stream where I will be painting this wonderful Griffin 77157 by Reaper Miniatures. A uh, very nice, beautiful mini. This is one of the earlier Reaper bone sculpts and it's a really nice figure. A nice big chunky mini that you can get for uh, just a few pounds. Welcome to everybody in chat and all our viewers. I can see Mr. Howell there talking about carrots. And uh, yeah, 157. Sorry. Uh, so what I've done just now is I've given this guy a, a quick dry brush with some Vallejo Flatter 770983. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is mix into that and here I've got some US Field Drab 70873 from Vallejo and uh, I'm going to just mix those two together a touch there just going to take a little bit of that and just whack it straight into it a little bit of water and then uh, using my handy dry brush here gonna just get a little bit of that and then uh, use my well used piece of dry brushing tissue down here and just lay a bit of that on all over the wings just to give a little bit of variation of colour so I'm gonna build this up over the next sort of half an hour or so or 15 minutes depending on how long it takes me build it up with a couple of different gradients of colour up to a almost bone colour over here. Hi Sharon! And thank you Tony! <laughs> so I'm gonna, uh, just give it a couple of dry brushes up. I always find it really hard to paint feathers um, with individual brush strokes so very uh, very easy to dry brush large feathered areas like this. You may have noticed if you're one of our regular viewers that I haven't got the steadiest of hands when it comes to uh, individual brush work. So this is perfect. Right, so done that. Then I'm going to go for some neat US field drab, a bit lighter. And we're going to not put that all over. We're just going to put that on these bottom areas here. In fact, I'm going to get a bit more of that off. Hi, Hi. So we're going to go for like this, the second row of feathers, first and second row of feathers from the back edge with a, a lighter colour, the US fill drab, and then we're going to go over, so we're not going to make all of the feathers the same, we're going to make these lower ones a bit lighter progressively, and leave the top edges about at the same kind of shade that they are now. A little lighten up on these bits on the body that go closer to the fair area there. And we can leave his head a little bit darker. We're gonna, I'm going to make his beak a nice kind of black to yellow on the tip, I think. Or maybe the other way around, I might, I might do it yellow to black. We haven't quite decided on that yet. Um, right, what do I owe oh, Pete? A posture check. A posture check. A there we go. And a hydrate. There we go. And then uh, oh, take the lid off my new hat box. Because Pete's redeemed hat me. Because Pete's redeemed hat me. There we go. And Pete's redeemed wig me. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. right, there you go. There's there's a wig. How's that? There's a wig, and then uh, and then we'll put our hat over the top. 
really am. I like it. Quite suits me. It kind of looks like it could be a real hat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where's me? Where's me mixy brush? So then, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take. So I've got this really yellowy colour here, which is some Vallejo ochre brown. But I'm going to save that for the body down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Tusk Ivory. The uh, the label is a little bit faded, but this is some Reaper Tusk Ivory. I'm going to take a little bit of that. And I'm going to mix that into the uh, US Field Drab. I'll just make that a little bit lighter. Progressively lighter until we get to the shade that we want. And I'm going to switch to a different brush. I'm going to go for a slightly smaller brush for this one. Oh, no. Maybe I'll use a different brush to that one that I've just blobbed through the black. Had some, uh, some black earlier on to paint the base, so I've just gone straight through that with the brush and got black all over it now. That's no good. So I'm going to go for a bit of this one. I'm just going to do the same, just lightening up those two rows of feathers at the bottom there. Thank you. Laying it in quite heavily to those feathers, make sure we get it in some of the nooks and crannies. There. Let's do a bit more there. Right, I'm just going to wash these brushes out because I made a bit of a mess there. Looks like I've got some kind of weird flat cap on because you can't actually see the proper hat. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> right then, so then we're going to go for some neat bone ivory or tusk ivory, even just for a lighter shade just on the edges of those two bottom rows of feathers. Want to get that, that edge a bit lighter. And the one good thing that I like about painting uh, mythical creatures like this is nobody can tell me that I've not painted it accurately. Hi! Because uh, nobody's ever seen a griffin in real life, so nobody can tell me it's wrong. Hi, Geralt! Hi, C. Jono! Once we've got that just a little bit lighter, that top edge. Right. So he's looking uh, looking fierce. Just have a little bit of a lighter shade on these bottom edges. Like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my attention for a moment or two to this like fur area. So griffins are primarily 
uh, the front end of an eagle and the back end, so including like the main claws, and then the back end of a lion or another like large cat. So I'm going to do this as a, which is why I put this ochre colour. We're going to mix the ochre, do the ochre as a base coat, and then mix a bit of the ivory in to make it like a nice kind of tan uh, colour, like the fur of a lion. And then I'm going to darken down the fur on this end of the tail and around the haunches just to make it look a little bit more shaggy. So get, let's get on to that. And let's put that brush to one side. And then we're going to get a smaller, another dry brush, a different one. So you might recognise that these don't look like any dry brushes that you would buy in a shop. That's because these are actually a set of makeup brushes. Because you don't need to buy expensive dry brushes. Um, actually, what I will do in a moment is I'm going to test out this one from uh, Rosemary and Co. And this isn't a dry brush, this is a, like a hog bristle brush. And I got this as a sample to try out and see whether it works any good as a dry brush. But these aren't the cheapest brushes. So uh, we're going to give that a whirl and see what it's like. But uh, it's quite stiff, so I don't know how that's going to fare to use as a dry brush. Looks like a dry brush, possibly not a dry brush. But these um, that I have been using, these are like quite cheap makeup brushes. Um, no reason why you have to spend a lot of money on. And we don't, unfortunately, Mighty Lancer Games, we don't sell makeup brushes. But, <laughs> but we probably could do. We do, however, sell uh, Army Painter Masterclass dry brushes, which are a very, very similar kind of product. So, uh, just going to lay a bit of this ochre brown, Vallejo ochre brown, onto the fur areas. I'm not going to worry too much if I touch onto the, the wings, because we're going to go back to those with a lighter colour in a minute. I've got some reefer linen white here that we're going to just lay a final bit on. Yeah, so, let's just get some of this daubed around dry brushed around into these fur areas. So when I undercoated this guy, I undercoated him with some uh, Vallejo what's it called? Sand. This colour over here. Grab it. Undercoated him with some German dark yellow, which is almost a perfect colour for this, this back area. But I undercoated the whole thing with this and then uh, gave it a couple of contrast washes over the top and then now uh, we're just adding a little bit more detail into it so the contrast makes it a little bit glossy and then this is kind of dulling it back down again which is pretty cool what we wanted so all over all over a little coat of that gets it almost to the colour that I wanted it most of the colour I wanted. Um, so let's mix a little bit up there. Geralt says that he likes the cheap army painter dry brush. Cheap army painter dry brushes. I used to use the army painter ones. I did used to use the army painter ones. Um, but I was getting annoyed with the ends splitting all the time. So uh, I was looking for something else. So we've got a couple of Citadel ones and they've been okay. And then I read a uh, I read an article on, uh, on good old Facebook that uh, mentioned about using makeup brushes, and I thought I'll give that a go. So I picked up this pack of uh, makeup brushes for about five pounds, and it's got some like so from from these sizes. So there's a whole bunch of different sizes from those right up to. Uh, these huge things like a, a blusher brush which we've used for uh, some terrain use that for dry brushing on some terrain they've been pretty cool so just a, a variation really and they've been uh, they've been pretty good been using these almost since we started streaming for most of our dry brushing or most of my dry brushing so quite impressed with them really maybe we'll have to source some 
to uh, to sell in the shop as an alternative. We shall see. So I'm just going to give them another quick going over. So I'm just going to catch on to the edge of these feathers at this end. So these are the ones that are already kind of dabbled a little bit on the bee. Uh, same colour as the wings here. And that means that it's just going to kind of pull it together a little bit as those little hints of colour through. Sharon says, the big one I use to dust minis after cleaning mold lines. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Or, uh, or if you've had them in the cabinet a while and you need to give them a little freshen up, some of that. You used to have a, like a can of the air duster stuff, but you still need something to agitate things sometimes. Right, so that's looking uh, that's looking pretty good, I think. So then we're going to go with an almost neat mix. I'm not going to go exactly neat, but almost. Uh, I'll just get it 90% tusk ivory. Do it like that. Final going over with that. So, just going away, like sort of into the grain. So normally you would think that you should dry brush like down the bottom of the mini but to get more pigment on the raised areas when we go like into the fur if you like give you a, a starker contrast i did always used to do, go the other way and then i saw uh, saw somebody else doing it this way and i thought well that looks better <laughs> so now i'll just do yeah. it this way you need to go up so that you catch the edges yes more sensible so otherwise you you can just be catching the same bits over and over again and you're not really like getting anywhere also very useful to use small circular motions so you won't get as many lines yeah but it's fair so i want one what you say okay there's different ways of doing it, isn't it? <laughs> minis in a cabinet forgotten i know nothing of it <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right right so I've not really touched the edge of the tail, so we're just going to give that a little go with this lighter colour. And then what we're going to do with that is just put a little uh, wash over it to darken it down once we've finished. So there we go. Right. Now we're going to get some linen white. This isn't actually going to take this long. Is it? Can we get a bit of Reaper linen white? And that's going to be a neat mix and then I'm going to get a smaller dry brush yet again because I want a little bit more control over these oh, there it is. Sharon says I love all my minis equally even the ones in the box that haven't been painted yet <laughs> we've got a box behind a chair that are unpainted minis. I don't think that they feel very loved at all, do they? No, they're not, they're not even so. made it to the draw of unpainted minis. They're just behind a chair with a blanket over yeah. the top. <laughs> they're, the, they're the ones that we've picked through a couple of times wait, looking for inspiration and it hasn't struck us yet. Three Kickstarter minis, I think. So I've uh, been thinking a lot about my Black Templars at the moment. Gonna be able to get on to painting a little bit of those tomorrow night, I think. Although I do need to finish my genie as well. So, uh, 
the RCL, so might have to have a dabble at that in conjunction with something uh, Space Marines over the next couple of days. Spoke to one of the lads earlier on who, um, I can't remember if I told you earlier, I probably haven't, but um, yeah, one of the one of the boys wants the new Black Templars box, but he doesn't particularly want the Space Marine squad out of it, so we've we've arranged a little swapsies so I can have the squad out of his box and I'll give him something out of my unpainted pile. So we're, uh, we're doing a swap. My wicked day is dry brushing and he's been talking about how he's doing it and all the paints he's used and actually talking us all through it for once. He's doing awesome. Mm -hmm. And now you've come, he's stopped talking. <laughs> Tony says, having a break tonight and hope to crack on with a mini tomorrow as a change from the housey project. Yes. The, the house is awesome, but I can understand why uh, a slight break would be nice too. Sharon says, I'm a proud mama of 2056 unpainted minis. <laughs> I don't have a problem. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and Wicked D says she's missed it. Yes, yes, you have. There was actual proper content and everything. He was doing awesome. Yeah. And look at those wings. Yeah, they look alright. Yeah, I've never counted mine either, Tony. I mean, I've only been painting since January, so I haven't got that many. But I think if we had to paint Nathan's, it might be a bit ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, we're not we're not counting mine. We're not counting. Mine. That would be uh, foolhardy. Right then, so, does any... What do you reckon? Do you think we should do... Oh, spreadsheets, yeah. I, I have often thought, well not often, but I have on, from time to time thought that having a spreadsheet of minis would be, uh, would be a sensible thing to do. wig hair that was attached to the wig that you were wearing but isn't part of the wig you were wearing. Yeah. That's what that was. Yeah. So yeah, I thought that having a, a spreadsheet of uh, of minis would be helpful so I knew what I had when I was going to go and buy some more oh, to, make sure it, yeah, to make sure I didn't do it again. Right. We're going to go for a little bit of rosy pink, so I'm going to do its tongue in some rosy pink. I thought you were going to like start into number number five then, a little bit of... Um, yeah, yeah. A little bit of uh, monitor. A little bit of rosy pink for its tongue. So, do you reckon the inside of birds' mouths is black? I don't know, but C. Jono says you've got to put a wig and a hat on and hydrate. Vicky D says maybe you can employ someone, say, on a salary of 25k per annum to run your mini spreadsheet. Oh, yeah, because we've got that lying around. Oh. A spare, spare cash just lying around for a spreadsheet maker. Wowzers. <laughs> Yeah, see, really, I should start cataloguing mine now, now that I've only really got about yeah. 15. But I was like poking through the box and going, yeah, I still don't like any of them. Yeah, I picked all these, but I'm not sure I want to paint that yet. So, wig, hat, hydrate. Wig, hat, hydrate. Away. What's this one? No, neither do I. It's got too many pink hairs attached to it. <laughs> this does look very similar to the one that I've just had on, although it smells of sherbet. It smells of orange. <laughs> sherbet. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> Why would it smell of sherbet? I don't know, but it does. That's that's odd. <laughs> I'm a bit concerned. Mm. 
I'm sure there are other jobs an MLGPA could do. What do you think my job is? <laughs> Don't you go stealing my job, we could do. Oh, you got double, double hat whammy with that hat because you can see the peak of it when you bend down. Right. So, I'm going to get a little bit of saffron yellow. Just making it up as I go along. So, a little oh, bit. we've gone back to normal. Yeah. A little bit of saffron yellow. I'm going to mix a little bit of this brown with it to kind of dull it down a bit because saffron yellow can be quite bright. Yeah, and it's Mrs. MLG's favourite yellow. <laughs> thank, thank you, C. Jono. I, uh, I do like to think that I'm rather swell. <laughs> right then. So, yellow, do you think the beak should be yellow on the tip? Or do you think it should be yellow uh, at the base and black on the tip? What do you reckon? says black base and yellow too. Okay. So, I mean really nice. But the, I, I can see yellow, yellow base and black tips on the uh, images of real life birds, but as you say, they're not real, are they, so you do what you want. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go, with, we'll go with the black, black, black base and yellow tip. No, see John I says black based. Yeah, so I'm just gonna try and paint its legs in a little bit. With, uh... So what I've done with the legs. So these are just straight undercoat, which was the German dark yellow, with a little bit of Agrax Earth shade and Null Oil wash over the top. So mixing, I've mixed the saffron yellow with tusk ivory and ochre brown mixture, and now we're just picking out the uh, the legs with that. And then I might even, if this turns out too bright, I might even give it a, uh, a wash over the top again just to dull it down a little bit. So because these are. Uh, Fairly ribbed on the, on the legs here as well. Just doing tiny little brush strokes, try and pick them out a little bit. So up to now, we've, we've done a German dark yellow base coat, a couple of coats of contrast paint. So we used Gorgrunter fur on the darker area. On the, uh, on the body. Can't remember now. It was last week. <laughs> uh, dark Oath Flesh, I think it was, over the, the uh, lower body. And then we've given it a couple of dry brushes, or half a dozen different dry brushes so far this evening. We went for Vallejo Flat Earth, followed by US Field Drab, a mixture of the two, even, followed by some US Field Drab. Mixed into that a little bit of Tusk Ivory. So lighten it up a little bit, up to a coat of linen white to get the edges of the wings here. And then, so claws, I think they're okay. I think they're okay. So we'll go for the beak. So we're going to go to like pure yellow on the end and then like black into the edge. So I'm just going to give the whole thing what we're going over with this kind of mixture that I've got back here. Up to about three quarters of the way up. So we get that black in. Paint in the bit that's going to be black. Try and avoid the pink. Semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi
sensible. I've got some brighter yellow on here, so what I'm going to do is mix, gradually mix a little bit of brighter yellow in. I suppose I better do the bottom, <laughs> the bottom of the beak as well. Isn't there? That would be uh, clever. Oh, sorry. <laughs> These wigs are very hot. Right. See, Jenna says, do you have the Bone Sylvanians in store? I was going to come and get the ones I'm missing. Yes, and we have added the new ones on today as well. Can't really hear Nathan over the music. Yeah, he's gone all muttery, that's why. Oh, sorry. I will turn the music right. down and let me know if it's um, if it's no good. And he'll stop muttering because I'm telling him off now, look. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise that I was muttering. I do apologise. We, uh, I'll stop, stop just muttering along to myself. So we're going to go for nice bright yellow. Tip. And then somewhere here, I've got oh, the blacks. The blacks dried up that I was using earlier on. So yes, see, Jono, I'll just get you a screenshot. Um, they're metal, are these ones, but we have got the other ones. I'll just get you a screenshot, and then I can see what I'm wittering on them. Yeah, they do look pretty cool. And we've got plenty of the uh, sugar skulls as well if you want to join in with the reaper painting competition for the it is a competition isn't it the sugar skull thing i think okay. i'll just show you see john what i'm talking about there you go so we've got Barton, Jackson, Gill and Mel in stock and then these are the new ones that only got added today and these are all metal ones that got added today and then obviously back to the normal ones you've got Cal and Gus and Max and Drake and Monty who was fun I like Monty Tish and Van and Tut and Sandy and Lon and Lou and Patch and Esme and Jack, I painted that one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there you go. That's that's them. Hope that helps. And back to the boy now. Where are you? There you are. Just over here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of black in this edge, and then hopefully see if I can blend it in without making everything black. So yeah, the Sugar Skull uh, is a Reaper Miniatures competition, which is, uh, is you can enter on their website and we have the Sugar Skulls in stock. Um, if you want to paint it, I don't know. Entry for this one is open until October the 28th. So you've got until the 28th of October to paint it and get your entries in which you do on the Reaper's website. And then they open judging on the 29th until the 2nd of November. So if you want to join in the Sugar Skull competition on the Reaper website, uh, you can get your Sugar Skulls from us and then you have until October 28th to paint it up and enter it on their website. And um, it's like a little Sugar Skull and a plinth I've got one, but it's still in the box. <laughs> but we did only add them today. So there you go. Oh yes, and Sharon is very, very correct. Uh, Reaper have also got their cave troll 
votes open on their website so you can go and vote for your favorite painted cave troll on Rupert's website currently and I think there are a couple of us who have put our entries in for that I know I have and I know that I have no hope of coming anywhere near but it was fun painting and we can also use it for the RCL so that's uh, that's why I did mine yeah you're too late <laughs> you're too late if you haven't painted it darling because the, the uh, voting is open so yes go vote for trolls go vote for trolls there are some pretty awesome um, painted I was trying to find the link I put the link in didn't I shall I remember I can't remember what channel I put it in now can't find it now could have written it anywhere <laughs> oh, I'll probably put it in the links channel oh there you go on our discord in the links channel which would make perfect sense because that's where you add links is the link to vote for your favorite cave troll you just have to sign into the reaper miniatures website it's uh, reaperminis.com forward slash painting contests forward slash contest forward slash 18th quarterly contest but the link is in our in our yes twitch and links channel and there are some amazing, amazing entries. They all look really, really cool. Um, but yeah, cool and awesome. Little Miss could tell mine straight away from the glitter on the background, which still is there and is still annoying. <laughs> Glossy black eyeballs for a, for a uh, griffin, do you reckon? See, Jono says, I call the activities coordinator at work cave troll. <laughs> if you've got an activities coordinator. Do, do they know? <laughs> I'm going to have to switch paintbrushes. This hook on the end of this one through my head is. Gonna, gonna switch to my new favourite paintbrush, my uh, Rosemary and Co. Series Thirty Three Number One. It's, uh, I'm a I'm a convert. I'm a convert, definitely. The uh, the only thing I was saying the other night to Mrs. MLG, the only thing is I would like if if the br handle of the brush was chunkier. And then, with this length of bristle, that would be ideal for me. Uh, yeah, I have got used to using a brush that's got a chunkier handle. But I do like the length of the bristles for a little bit of control. So I, uh, <laughs> I uh, packed up a couple of orders for a couple of you today. We got those dispatched this morning with some Rosemary and Co brushes in. Without naming any names, I'm sure you know who you are. So I'm just gonna do the claws here, the tips of the claws, we're gonna go for some uh, Reaper pure black on the edges of the claws and then we'll see where we are. When you had your picture of eagles up down, in what colour eyes did they have? Yellow with a black dot in the middle for bald eagles. I don't know what kind of eagle you're going for. Basically, yeah, yellow with a black dot in the middle seems to be a, a good shout for eagly eyes. Apart from this weird looking thing down here, I don't know what that is though. That's that's creepy. But yeah, uh, Sharon says yellow too. something over the top of the that box. one's carrying a, some kind of crocodile alligator thing 
That's hardcore, isn't it? An eagle that carries away. Well, crocodiles. they are quite hardcore. We have. What's our largest one? Is it sea eagle? Oh, that thing was massive. Is that though. is that what we have? Yeah, I can't, I can't remember what we have. Mm. We, have we, white the, we have white-tailed eagles, I think. Went to the local bird of prey centre, didn't we? And they they got that sea eagle thing or whatever it was out, and that that thing was like mahusive. It was just insane. Although it was a bit clumsy, wasn't it? It was uh, it reminded me of our greyhound. <laughs> yeah, but I suppose it's slightly different flying over a field that you know you've only got so much room than the ocean. Yeah. And equally, our greyhound was just insane. Yeah, I don't know if he's a if he was ever class him as a typical greyhound. I don't even think you could ever class him as a typical dog. He was just a bit nuts. <laughs> Fitted him very well in our household. I uh, I saw somebody when I was driving along the road. Might have been when I was on my way home yesterday, and they they were having. Uh, some of the issues that we used to have with ours as they were walking past another dog mm. and it made me uh, made me think of that he didn't used to like other dogs did he <laughs> he didn't used to like a lot of things let's, let's face mm. it uh, Sharon says if I find it I'm about to post a pic on discord of the eagle I flew definitely yellow piercing eyes cool how, how can you uh, fly in eagles then? What's that? What's that all about? We've held a lot of birds at like events and stuff like that, but you just you know you just stick your arm out. <laughs> but it's awesome because when they're up close, they are amazing. But we've never never done anything else. No. Somebody had some at the wedding. Lots of owls at their wedding. Oh yeah. Because they were a Sheffield Wednesday fan or are a Sheffield Wednesday fan, so they had owls everywhere. <laughs> That's massive. <laughs> nice. It's the eagle. Wowzers. That's huge. I can't really That's see huge. it properly. Like. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll yeah. show you. I'll Birds of Prey Centre let you fly them. Cool. Cool. We have fed baby owls and <laughs> Little Miss once held, like, held a kookaburra that then flew off and wouldn't come back to the guy who ran the centre and they had to get about four members of staff to try and get it down out of a tree. <laughs> that was quite funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. The baby owls were ace. They kept eating my shoelaces. And they had a, they had a baby ostrich. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, and that didn't like Little Miss. No, no. Well, it did like, I think that was the, the problem. It liked her too much. It kept chasing around and trying to get her. Trying to eat her. <laughs> trying time. to eat her. <laughs> so, uh, I was just touching his eyes in with some bright yellow. Yes, yeah, we. Uh, his ostriches are nasty. Yeah, it, was it an ostrich? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. What's that other Aussie, thing? No, it was an it? emu. It was, was an it? emu. Yeah. yeah it was I mean, called Aussie. Was it? But it was an ostrich. Uh, anyway, it was. It was little. It was yeah, little. You wouldn't have got. You wouldn't have wanted to go near it once it had fully grown. Whatever yeah, it was. It is fully grown now. And you remember the last time we went? Yeah. It was massive. We went in the. In, we were out in the pen, weren't we? And we fed all the alpacas. Yeah. And we fed the baby ostrich. And there was there was other stuff as well, weren't there? But this, yeah, it kept just trying to eat her. <laughs> I don't think they let you in anymore. I've never seen anybody else go in. Maybe they decided yeah. it was... Uh, it might have been Ozzy the Emu. That's what I said Wicked D, but he's not having it. Was what well, it is an emu. Maybe it is an emu. <laughs> See, he's still not having it. 
know. It used to it used to roam when it was really tiny. It was like about a foot tall. It used to roam around, didn't it? And they used to like just let it wander around. And then it's obviously got too big now. They should have learnt some lessons from Rob Hall about how aggressive they can be. Yeah, they, they look like dinosaurs, don't they? I really want to see a shoe bill live. They look so mean to Sharon. Yeah, they look like prehistoric. And uh, Pete says, always talking, get some hydration. <laughs> He says, Ozzy the Emu, Prince of Darkness, ex-member of Black Sabbath. It probably would have eaten the head up of Bart this day. Gonna need some more black. Just a tiny bit of black. Loads of time. Just need to get that. I've got smudged a bit of too much yellow just on the inside edge of its beak. Uh, it's bugging me. But I'd have never been able to touch that in with the uh, the hook. Side of the top of its mouth. I reckon. Bit of black on those eyes. Just try a little bit just at the front. Right. What do you reckon to that? So I want to darken down this edge of his tail. Well, if you hold it flatten up a bit. Sorry. There. How was that? <laughs> so there we are so far. Needs a needs a little bit I think it's beaks too bright. It's, it is very bright, to be fair. But then those pictures that you had up. I know some, but it doesn't. Some of, some of them were really bright, weren't they? Well they were, but I don't think it really goes with the rest no. of them. Maybe I need to make that a little bit paler. So I just want to do this end of the tail. And then, and then we'll sort the uh, do the end of the tail, and then we're going to try and do something with this beak to make it not quite so vivid. It really, kind of draws the eye. Oh. Thanks, Moxie. Can you see? Tony says, up to you, but I'd be tempted to put some black on the very tip of the beak. We give that a go. We could give that a go, certainly. Just just a tiny little bit just down here. Original 
like, or what I remember as the original Marauder Griffin that uh, Games Workshop had in the early 90s. So it was, and then they, they used the same Griffin and then gave it a whole bunch of different riders to, for different factions, so the Empire and the Bretonians and what have you, they all used the same Griffin model. And the, the size and the pose and everything really remind me of that original model. So I've got a base here, which I'm going to, uh, I am going to base this thing on on this larger base. So I've got a Rubicon 60 millimeter base, but I didn't put it on it while I was painting it because I knew I wanted to be able to get under, up underneath it. So once we've finished painting it, however much more I do to it, I'm going to put it on there and then we're going to use, because they've got quite a nice lip on the edge of these bases, I'm going to build up with a little bit of basing material into the thing so that when is uh, when it's mounted so I'm going to butt the back end of the base up against that side so he's stood a little bit more on it like that as you can see and then when we put him on the table when he's uh, attacking the party in Pathfinder then uh, he's going to look suitably impressive stacked up against the hero minis ready to tear somebody's head off So, let's find something to darken that tail down with. What shall we use? I think we'll go for... <laughs> <laughs> Moanly joking, Wicked D. Moanly joke. The way that you guys mince through bad guys, you'll be uh, killing it in no time anyway. You could even do little dagger lines to give it a non-uniform look, keeping it towards the tip with tiny hints. Oh, you're just suggesting like all sorts of craziness now, Tony. So we're going to use some dark oak flesh contrast paint on the tip of the tail here, which I've decided that I quite like the contrast paints almost as washes, although they do leave a little bit of a glossy finish. But we're going to uh, deal with that, the glossiness, with some matte varnish. Once, uh, once it's all finished, I've got a whole bunch of minis that are kind of lining up ready for some matte varnish on a nice day. There we go. But the, you know, the Citadel contrast paints have been, uh, have been pretty good in this respect. Now I saw something the other day that lends me to think that Army Painter are coming out with their own range of contrast-esque paints in the not too distant future, but I haven't seen any from any of our distributors about any uh, imminent release. But I saw, saw something on YouTube that made it look as if they were, I can't remember what it was called. I can't remember what the range was called. Anyway, that looks pretty cool. Pretty cool if they do. Oh, always thought that the uh, always thought that GW should have maybe switched over to dropper bottles when they did the contrast paints. Hi, Zolidar. Right then. So dagger lines, Tony. What are you thinking? Like, if I, uh... yeah, I think so. I think that's what he's thinking. That's it, those. Yeah, not seeing any uh, not seeing any info on them from our distributors. I don't know whether they're just starting to show them off, but when the uh, when they launched some of their other products recently, they uh, invited us into a like a retailer presentation, but they haven't this time. So we'll have to wait and see what comes down the line. Mm, I don't know. I'll have to do a little bit more research. I only saw it while I was eating my breakfast today, I think.
This is looking absolutely fabulous, Nathan. I'm really liking the way you've done this. Thank you, Tony. That's very kind of you to say so. What I am going to do is I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get a little bit of brown that we had down here, that flat earth that we started off with before it all, uh, before it all dries up. So I'm just get a little bit of that, quite watery, and possibly a little bit of this black. I'm going to mix that in so it's a bit darker. Get it quite watery. I'm just going to use the very tip of the brush just to add a little bit more definition in between these bits on the legs. Yeah. Just like that to win a little bit more line on the so I'm just, gonna, just gonna give it a couple of little hints. Just where I've been a bit heavy handed early on. I was looking back at my uh, the black templars that I was painting the other day. And I've, now I've had my hands on the new box and seen the transfers and what have you. Come in it, I've been painted over my clumsy attempt at hand painting Templar crosses on the guys. And we are, uh, we're going to put some transfers on, I think. Seeing as I'm not as steady handed as I used to be. So I've, uh, I've missed the boat on painting my troll now, or could I still submit it? Just I won't get as many votes because voting's open. No, you can't, you can't submit it for the Reaper Cave Troll competition, but you can submit it for the RCL quarterly competition in the region. Oh. Well, I kind of wanted to enter the competition. Do well, we, then we you should have painted it, shouldn't mm. you? Do we know what the next one's going to be? Is that only decided? That's only decided that the winner, because we've never, this is the first time I've ever entered as well. And the only reason I entered is because this is the first time it's corresponded with, or the first time since we've been doing the RA, RCL. It's corresponded with the RCL, so you could paint it in the in the correct quarter. Right. And, you know, and you're like, yay. So, so we could enter it in the competition and have painted it in the correct quarter. So when, when they get the winner, the winner decides the next mini. All right, that seems cool. So we've painted them before for the RCL, but never actually entered it into the actual competition. Right. So just mixed a little bit of linen white into my yellow. Let's try and pale this uh, deep down a touch because I thought it was a little bright. Might have made it worse now. More of an egg, egg yolk yellow kind of colour. We'll see what it looks like in a second. We've got a minute going and that's all that you're doing. So Sharon says that the army painters paints aren't out yet, so they're not out until 2022. Um, Tony says, I saw the army painter video over the weekend, they're definitely interesting. I don't use many contrast paints and definitely don't use them the way they are intended. They'd be too vibrant for my style. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I do like them. Yeah, I've only no. ever used them on them zombies, that's the only time I've ever used contrast paints. Yeah, they're definitely a tool aren't they, for uh, getting stuff done quick. But the uh, the thing that I saw about the 
the, or the headline that I saw on the uh, on the army painted thing was are these the best paints ever or something like that. So I think I'll have to check it out. So. Thanks, Tony. And, See you um, later, Tony. Reese, has, you. Reese has fixed the Discord now, so we're all back to being able to uh, chat and bracket and do whatever we want. Wow, what's going on with the Discord? There's a bot that tells you about Yu Gi Oh cards, because obviously the Discord is for all hobbying so pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and magic and all sorts there's a bot that tells you like about cards and you, it was set to use square brackets none of us really use square brackets but um i can't remember who it was but somebody said something and put it in square brackets then it brought the bot up and confused everybody and then uh, we said like what's this race this random this random thing about Yu-Gi-Oh in the middle of chat and so so we came and had a look and then chat wouldn't work at all, but that was because he was fixing it. So, uh, I see. and it's all done now, so we're alright. I see. So there we go. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna finish the base up, but I'm gonna suggest that he's uh, probably, probably sorted. So thank you very much for everyone for coming, and uh, we'll get him based up in the interim between this week and next week. And next week we'll pick an entirely new mini to start. So, uh, yeah, awesome. Any suggestions, put them in the Discord and we'll have a look and see what we uh, have to hand. If you would like to see anything that's been in the sub boxes, please drop us a suggestion in the Discord. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming along and watching. And we'll see you, hopefully, tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.